In 2019, I let Twitter decide what movie I was going to review as a kind of movie review special. That ended up being The Ginger Dead Man with Gary Busey, which was honestly a lot of fun. Great suggestion, great video. Like you should totally go watch it or whatever. That video recently surpassed a million views, so I wanted to celebrate by running it back. So at the end of 2020, I let Twitter decide my fate yet again. And some of the contenders were the Banana Splits movie, Fight for Your Life, which looks like might as well replace this with a T. <laughs> Killer Sofa, Thanks Killing, and your winner, Drive Through. That title's a bit underwhelming. That cover art's a bit underwhelming. Movie's a bit underwhelming. You guys remember Shao Kahn from Mortal Kombat? Yeah, apparently he has a brother called Ray, which that's not like an evil name. <laughs> I mean, Ray Khan is today's sponsor. Longtime sponsor of the channel. We put respect on their name in these streets. It is 2021. You know what that means? People are going to start flooding the gym. Not me. I've already come to terms with this. But if you would like an affordable pair of earbuds that will deliver that type of bass that'll kick in those extra reps, the Raycon Everyday E25 earbuds are here. I recently moved into my first home. That's why nothing's ready. And that's why this is happening on my face. I've been running nonstop errands and odd jobs to get this place together. And when I do, I listen to music and podcasts and Raycons are the alley to my oop. Six hours of playtime starting about half the price of premium wireless earbuds on the market. And if you want to get in on this, go to buyraycon.com slash Mr. Gigi to get 15% off your order. They also have a 45 day free return policy. That's buyraycon.com slash Mr. Gigi. And thank you, Raycon, for sponsoring this video. 2007's drive through is bad, but some people love this movie and we should talk about that. The Ginger Dead Man is a comedic slasher, kind of like drive through but the Ginger Dead Man, Gary fucking Busey, blows this movie out of the water. And here's why. In drive through these characters are a herd of unsalted moccasins. Boring! The slasher can't be on screen 24-7, so you kind of need these guys to fill in those gaps. The problem is, they can't. They're like these secret AIs that are programmed to talk about dick all. I mean, the Ginger Dead Squad aren't exactly an ensemble for the ages, but come on. The first three minutes of this movie are the best part of it. And that makes me sad because it's for all the wrong reasons. Yo, Greaseye, where we going, play? Motherfucking hella burger, yo. Trying to get a double chili cheese all up in here. Mm. Oh my God, like double chili. 2007's a hell of a drug. Yo, yo, check this shit out, yo. Yeah, yo. Oh. Hey, yo. Yeah, yo. No lie. It's kind of hard to do in a moving car. Especially with your dick out. I don't get genuinely annoyed by this, but it's kind of a thing that I just always notice. Sucking dick in movies. Is, I hate it when a girl just swan dives out post load, pulls this move like it's effective. I wouldn't trust this shit to clean my mouth after a burger, let alone a Whopper. But I guess every movie ever thinks that's supposed to do something after recycling drool for three minutes. But what I hate more than that is that the guy just doesn't do anything afterwards. She hits the bend and snap, and then he just goes about his day. I may be out of the loop here. What girl, after blowing you, tucks you back in and zips you back? Don't even think about it, you fucking idiot. Nobody does that. This is a major plot hole. Movie bad. Our antagonist for this movie is Horny the Clown, AKA you at 3 a.m. <laughs> fucking control yourself, dude. Seriously though, that's the mascot of Hellaburger, which they're currently at. And the drive-thru guy messes with them a bit, so Rothless Burger says, Yo, how about I go show Jag off in the box? What's, What's up? up? Yo, Tony, I don't think that's a good idea. Cause your hog is still hanging out, my guy. Tony! I still haven't seen you tuck it. You can't go in there with both heaters untucked. My guy's dual wielding. The fuck is even the plan here? Wait, this sophomore working the graveyard shift is talking slick? Yo, how about I murder him? Yo, you really want to have an attitude putting together my chili cheese fries at 3 a.m. when you're getting paid 25 cents above the minimum? It's only fair. Homie got a date with my plate. Gonna put my gat, gonna peel his cap back. That's called motherfucking bars. You know nothing about that. Obviously, Horny kills him. Let's talk about Horny. <laughs> His voice sounds like a drive through speaker. One tries with that. That's the point, and I get that. Makes sense. 200 IQ, but it still sucks. Bring it up. 
He only communicates in zingers, which Ginger Dead Man did too, so no harm, no foul. Some are even a little cute. You eyeballing me, boy. This chick starts it off by lip syncing the intro song while the opening credits crudely cut in. And oh, this is our main character. Okay, sure. I wonder if the fact that she's a lead singer of a pretty solid band will be relevant for the rest of the They movie. don't even acknowledge it fresh off the stage. Right off stage, just start tonguing her down. Hey, good job, babe. Nope. I love when you play that song. Nope. Hey, I'm gonna be honest with you because that's the type of relationship that we have. We're supposed to be here for each other. I just want you to not take this to heart. That set kind of sucked. Not even that. There is very, very out of place political humor in this movie. And I have no clue as to why I feel like I only see this stuff in these shitty movies. <laughs> it's so weird. I don't remember inviting any banana Republicans to my party. Nah, 5-0 just rolled up. Shit is dead as Nixon. Well, you know what they say. If you're 20 and you're not a liberal, you don't got a heart. And if you're not Republican when you're 50, you got no money. Selling out the 60s like the rest of the baby boomers. The fuck is this? Just break the fourth wall and tell me your ideology. I'll vote for who you want me to vote for. Just stop this. In addition, the romantic subplot is nerf Justin Long waiting for his girlfriend to turn 18 so he can tap, tap that barely legal ass. What's happening tonight? Being stupid. This movie just has a bunch of references in the dialogue. I mean, there's a reference to finding satanic messages after reversing music, which that was my shit when I was younger. I would stay glued on YouTube watching all those stupid ass conspiracy videos while low quality club to death just bled through my headset. 2.30, shit. I'm out. Catch you guys later. Damn. I'm glad in the chronic. This girl says, Weed warp, dude. <laughs> which sounds like something I would say if I was making fun of stoners. It's actually a little funny because they all use the Ouija board at the beginning of the movie and nothing happens right then and there, but they all end up getting hunted down afterwards. And that's because they summoned Horny, right? No, you're not paying attention? He's already on the loose. So, fuck was the point of this? Oh, it was for- Oh, <laughs> oh dude, come on! There is one actor I recognize in this movie. Well, technically two. But the one is this guy, AKA the other guy in According to Jim, AKA not Jim. And if you don't know what According to Jim is, you probably had cable. Anytime Horny comes on screen, uh -huh. this loud deep fried screamo comes on and apparently it just like, crossed over every audio engineer that tried to tame it. And with a movie like this, I feel like you can really redeem yourself with the kills. And there's one uh, exploded head in the microwave. And other than that, it's just really a lot of off-camera killing, which is usually not the move for a slasher. This movie just doesn't hold up for me. And it sucks because I legit tweeted out, I am a mere two minutes into watching the winner and I am drowning in content. Good job, guys. <laughs> and that was true, I told you. The best part of the movie was the first three minutes. If that was the movie, oh, we'd be having a fucking ball right now. But the rest of the movie just ended up being just a bit hollow. I mean, I guess I could also mention the fun cameo they had in it. Check out this guy, one of the cashiers at Helleburger. Oh, I forgot some of you guys aren't as old as me. Morgan Spurlock, the guy from Super Size Me, McDonald's documentary. No, it doesn't really matter. It's a cute little thing for us seniors. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is drive through Sorry, I just don't want to try and force any content out of that. It's kind of a fun time. I like, you know, getting you guys to interact with the videos in some way. But yeah, we're just going to cruise into the first outro of 2021, baby. If you guys enjoyed this video, please leave a like. And here is your second reminder in 2021 to please leave a like. Subscribe because I have more content coming your way. I actually do. I'm back on it. I had to take time off. I told you because I was moving. I have moved in. Shout out to my beautiful, beautiful patrons for supporting the boy. Shout out to Nick Antic for retweeting my last video tweet. And as always, I am Mr. GG and I am out. Bye.